All right. Uh, welcome, everybody, to April's Panvala Town Hall. Uh, we kind of changed the name of this meeting. It used to be called the Panvala Caucus Meeting. Now it's a town hall. It's basically the monthly meeting where we all come together and kind of uh, go over what's been going on and what's coming forward uh, so we can all have a successful donation matching round. Uh, they happen once a quarter at the end of each quarter. The last one happened in March. Uh, so we're right after the last donation matching round and the next one will probably happen in June. Uh, so we're just, we just wanna get everybody on the same page about what's going on, what we do and how we can have a successful next quarter. So before I dive into the details, uh, just a general overview of what we do here, what this Panvala thing is, why we're working together on this thing. Uh, what Panvala is, is uh, in crypto terms, it's a protocol treasury that communities can share. So if you've been involved in crypto, you've seen all these different protocols that have their treasury that they use to support development on their protocol. And Panvala is kind of like that, except instead of using Panvala's treasury to spend on Panvala itself, we want Panvala to be a treasury that communities can share to use for what they want to do. So that's why we allocate it via donation matching to all these different communities so we can share it together. Uh, in non-crypto terms, in real world terms, uh, you can think of Panvala as a community managed endowment. And to me, the most uh, relevant example of a real world community managed endowment is kind of a university endowment. Uh, endowments are very uh, common in American universities and uh, the vibrant student life that people are familiar with on college campuses are supported by a community managed endowment. The community of alumni and students are deciding how to use the endowment to support research, education, and student life. And uh, not everybody has the benefit of having some uh, wealthy robber baron gift them land to use to support their community. And we wanna be able to build up that same kind of dynamic from scratch. Having a community managed endowment that any community can plug into is what we're trying to do here. Uh, so uh, the, the reason why people tend to join Panvala, uh, you, are, you probably have better answers than I do, but the answers that I tell people are in the near term, it's very straightforward. We just match people's donations. So this past quarter, uh, donations were matched at an average of about 2x. The quarter before that, it was 7.5x. Uh, when we match people's donations, it's kind of straightforward for people to join and become a part of it because the benefit is clear. Uh, but that's really just the near term reason why people join in the long term. What we're trying to do together is give communities a tool, an economic tool that's on par with corporate equity and national currencies. Uh, so uh, the reason why that's important is because when I look out at our society, I see a society that's very dominated by political life and by corporate life and community life really takes a back seat. And to us, the, the, that's really an economic problem. Uh, companies have powerful equity, nations have powerful currencies, but communities just kind of pool our resources together to get things done, which can be effective, but doesn't have the same kind of power behind it. Uh, so what we see Panvala being is that economic tool that can elevate community life to at least be on par with political life and corporate life, but ideally elevate community life a little more than that. Uh, so that's what we're trying to do here. Uh, our mission is we believe that generally speaking, the more we share Panvala's treasury, the stronger it gets. The more communities working together have more built up negotiating power to use to strengthen this treasury that we share. So we want to share Panvala with as many communities as possible and elevate community life across the board. Uh, doing that is not necessarily the easiest thing. We grew from five communities to 47 communities and we want to continue growing. If we want to share Panvala as much as possible, we have to have the kind of mindset, we have to have the kind of culture that's conducive to sharing. And that's what I refer to as our culture of generosity. Uh, there's a lot of uh, communities, especially around cryptocurrencies, where people are worried about the value of the token and how some software or something is going to give value to the token. <laughs> but that's not what Panvala is. The value of Panvala is in you, it's in your communities, it's in our cooperation together. Uh, so it's really about how we behave and how we work together. And the stronger we are at that, the stronger Panball is going to be. So when I say a culture of generosity, we can break it down into a couple different things. First of all, be generous with your help. 
since we all benefit when any of our communities succeed, uh, we help each other out. We want every community that's participating in Panvala to succeed because uh, a rising tide lifts all boats. Uh, secondly, we're generous with our shared resources. Uh, we're trying to share Panvala together. There's different things that we share, mainly the, the token supply, but also other things. Uh, so make sure that when you're using the shared resources, that other people can benefit from Panvala as much as you do. Don't, don't hog things, be generous. Uh, thirdly, be generous with your presence. Uh, a, a lot of times what we're doing as communities uh, requires people to show up to things and uh, hang out with each other. <laughs> Community life is about spending time with other people. So when you can, support other communities by showing up and support Panvala as a whole by showing up. And lastly, be generous with your loyalty. Uh, the, the, what we're trying to take on is a big and complex and hard and the road ahead is going to be bumpy. It's not gonna be an easy thing that we do together but we stick together even when it's difficult. What we're trying to build is a network of thousands of communities that are working together. And that's what we're bootstrapping with this token system. The, to get uh, to the end goal that we're trying to produce together, we have to be able to make it through challenging times together without falling apart. Because if it doesn't stick together, it doesn't work. So uh, that's why we're generous with our loyalty. So that's what we're doing here with Panvala. Uh, any quick questions about what we're doing here before I move on into the specifics about this quarter? All right, next up is the document that I will share in the chat. Uh, and if somebody in the Panvala Caucus Telegram group can drop the Zoom link in there because somebody's trying to join and can't join, feel free to drop that link there. Uh, if you are watching this video and you want this document, I believe this QR code should get you there. So feel free to scan this QR code if you're watching this on YouTube. Uh, but uh, other than that, I'll dive into this. Uh, so basically for this quarter, uh, which uh, our last donation round ended on March 25th, to now April 6th, and we're gearing up for the next quarter. Uh, for this quarter, what we want to do is grow uh, Panvala to 90 communities and create committees where more people within the Panvala community can step up and take on leadership roles. So that's the general overview. This is a long document, but if there's anything to take away from this thing, it's really two things. We're trying to grow Panvala to 90 communities and we want to uh, uh, create opportunities for more people to step into leadership roles. Uh, so uh, the first thing on here is uh, that growing to 90 communities. So uh, at the end of the day, Panvala is powered by growth. Uh, what we're doing here only works if we can grow to more and more communities. So there's two reasons for that. Uh, first of all, the current donation matching that all of our communities are benefiting from, it's powered by dilution. Uh, the existing PAN token holders are being diluted every quarter to match the donations that we all bring in. And that works, but it, it works a lot better when it, uh, in a growing system than it does in a stagnant system. If we're stagnant and we keep diluting to try to match donations, it's just not gonna work as well. So uh, the, the model that we're using is predicated on growth. And secondly, the end goal, as I said before, of what we're doing here is to bootstrap a network of thousands of communities. It's not about using the inflation from Panvala to match donations forever because the inflation does not last forever. It's like Bitcoin where it tapers off over time as we get to that maximum supply of 100 million. So if we're trying to bootstrap this network of communities that work together to bring in external subsidies that aren't from the inflation, that are from things like corporate sponsorships and large individual donors, then we need to grow from the 47 communities that we are today to thousands of communities that are the, collectively this bigger thing that's worth uh, people sponsoring, people supporting, because they like what we do together. So we have to continue to grow to get where we're headed. It's just part of what we do. So the way that we do this, uh, generally Panvala doubles in size each quarter, and we wanna continue to do that. Uh, last quarter, we didn't quite double in size, uh, but the, basically, uh, the Panvala League itself was created in June of 2020. Uh, Panvala as a whole was launched before that in August of 2019. But the structure where we do donation matching through the Panvala League started in June 2020. Uh, and that was five communities sharing the system. 
figure to 10 by October, it was 29 by December, and in March it was 47. So we want to uh, get back on the trajectory where we're doubling, uh, and that means 90 communities for this next quarter. Uh, we estimate that the donation matching round will be in June, so we have uh, about two and a half months to grow to 90 communities to hit that goal. Uh, it's an ambitious goal, uh, but if we break it down, uh, it's uh, a lot more tractable than it seems. There's three main ways that we grow so far. Uh, it's the coalitions within the Panvala League growing, and those coalitions are basically groups of similar communities that work together and get a budget funded by Panvala's inflation to do things together. Uh, so right now there are five coalitions. There's the Women-Led Web3 Coalition, there's a Crypto Art Coalition, the Regenerative Commons Coalition, the Future of Work Coalition, and the Digital Identity Coalition. So right now there's five. Uh, we want to create more of those around different groups of communities and give them a budget to cooperate together. Uh, but basically, when those existing five communities and the future communities grow by adding on other communities that they want to work with, uh, that's one source of how Panball grows. Uh, the second way we grow is by individual members of the Panvala community like you uh, referring other communities within their network and earning a referral bonus for doing that. Uh, and that's uh, referring uh, communities in crypto, but it's also referring communities outside of crypto. Because again, Panvala is not just a crypto thing. Uh, we think we can elevate community life across the board and we want to bring on more and more communities outside of crypto uh, and get them on board. It takes more work to do that, but uh, I'll go into later our current model of how we make that happen. And there's already uh, a dance studio in Wyoming. Uh, and uh, I, I think there's, I forgot the other example that I use of uh, uh, communities that are already interested in using this thing. Uh, and we want to show them and be able to tell the story to more people about the different kinds of communities that share Panvala. So more communities can see themselves uh, in uh, using this system. And then the third way we grow is just uh, communities who hear about Panvala just reaching out to us. So not, not necessarily us pulling people in, but people seeing what we're doing and wanting to be a part of it. They reach out to us and that's great. Uh, so if we're trying to grow to 90 communities from 47, uh, you could just break it down into each of those buckets, 15 communities in each bucket. Uh, uh, like the five coalitions could add three uh, communities each, and that would be 15. Uh, 15 communities could come in from people like you referring them, and then we add communities that way. And then maybe 15 other communities reach out to Panvala on their own and say, hey, I want to be part of this thing. And then uh, we would be at 92 communities. So that's one um, uh, possible scenario of how that could play out. Uh, again, we don't know what's going to happen, but we want to show you that like there is a, a way for you to contribute to making that happen. And that's by telling more communities that you're a part of or that you know about what's going on here, how it's working for your community and how it could work for theirs. Uh, so we, we want to help you do that. So if there's any communities that you have in mind and you're, uh, you don't know where to start about how to uh, show them how to be part of Panvala, uh, just reach out in Telegram and we want to help you make that happen. Uh, any questions on that part? All right, I'll dive into the next section. Okay, so this section is basically titled uh, based on a feeling I've had <laughs> for many, many months uh, as like a Panvala grows and there ends up being more work to do all the time. I, I like doing more work, but really Panvala needs leaders. We need more people who uh, are excited about what's going on and want to step up to take on uh, some of the work that needs to be done to make it work each quarter and over the years as we grow. Uh, so if you've, if you've benefited from Panvala and you're excited about it, then we want you to uh, be a part of this thing and help make it grow so other people can benefit the way you have. So there's a couple of ways to do that. And the first is uh, coalition leaders. So we have those five coalitions and each of those coalitions have somebody who's stepped up to kind of lead that coalition over time and push it forward. 
Uh, so uh, there's there's not that much required to be a coalition leader. Uh, the if if you're here right now and you're paying attention to what goes on in Panvala, that's the biggest requirement. Uh, keeping up to date what, with what goes on in Panvala, so you can help the communities in your coalition succeed. And then uh, other than that, uh, leading like regular meetings with your coalition and uh, uh, making sure that uh, there's uh, ways for the communities and the coalition to benefit from each other, share what they're up to, get help on what they need to. Uh, and then secondly, uh, with that budget that Panvala gives each coalition to use to cooperate, uh, the coalition leader is kind of the person who kind of pushes proposals forward. Uh, there's like, uh, it's, it's controlled by the coalition and the communities are trying to agree on what to use it for but there kind of has to be some somebody pushing the ball forward. And if you become a coalition leader, you are that person. Uh, so it's been great working with the existing coalition leaders, uh, uh, Muskan from uh, Madagama Delta and uh, Woman Led Web3 Coalition uh, in particular has been doing a great job. I've been on several calls with her talking to other uh, potential communities that could benefit from Panvala and uh, join that coalition. And that's really uh, what we want to see more of. That's how, uh, like, we the more we can help communities benefit from each other and from working together, uh, the stronger Panbala gets over time. Uh, so uh, the the coalition leaders are volunteers. Like, they don't get paid to do it. Uh, although, if the the since each coalition gets a budget based on what they've brought in uh, in donation matching over the past quarter, uh, if your coalition wants to use the coalition budget to reward the coalition leader. There's no rules against that. You can do that, uh, but you should think of it as a volunteer uh, kind of role to take on. The second way to step into a role in Panvala is to join a committee. Now, these committees don't exist yet. They're all potential committees, but if they sound good to you, we want to create the ones that people are actually interested in joining and taking on. Uh, so uh, there's there's lots of things that happen in Panvala each quarter, and I try to break them down into buckets of things that get done and trying to organize committees around each of those. Uh, the first of these is the membership committee. So each quarter we're adding new uh, communities on each quarter, and you've probably seen my messages in Telegram about, uh, hey, here are these new communities. I want to be a part of the thing. Uh, and getting people to kind of uh, review those communities, talk to them, uh, make sure that they know what's going on. Uh, if you join the membership committee, you become a part of that process. And instead of me being the one who's talking to every potential new uh, community, uh, you become a part of that process as well. Uh, this uh, this uh, membership committee would also be for the token holders association, uh, which is for individuals rather than communities. And I'll go into that a little bit later. Uh, but basically, you would be talking with communities who want to join Panvala and individual token holders who've already staked for a community that they want to support and want to become part of the Token Holders Association. Uh, so that's one way to get involved, being part of the membership committee, which we will create if you're interested in. Uh, the second one is the Marketing and Events Committee. Uh, so this committee would manage the content on panvala.com, make sure that everything there is getting the message across appropriately, and the weekly Panvala Observer Newsletter, which has been going great. Thanks, Kate. Uh, so uh, if you've seen that uh, weekly uh, newsletter, uh, that's part of what we do to get the message out about what's going on in Panvala. Uh, you'd also help uh, communities get their events imported and featured on events.panvala.com, which is the Panvala events calendar. Uh, each community can have their own page that they can use as their own calendar without any other community's events on there. So if you don't, if there are communities that don't have that kind of page, we want to set that up for them and you would help do that there. Uh, we'd also do social media campaigns and things like that. Uh, that's what this committee is all about. And if you're interested, uh, we will create this committee for you to be a part of. Uh, third, the budget committee. Uh, so I'm going to go into uh, the, the next section is basically how we manage sharing Panvala each quarter. And there are lots of details in there that only really get surfaced when something uh, goes wrong or something happens that's unexpected. Uh, but like the details uh, are something that we want more and more people to understand and be able to change over time. And if you're interested in that sort of thing, uh, if I when I get into this next section, a lot of the details are intriguing to you, join the budget committee because you can help make sure that Panvala is balanced so it can stay easy to share over time because that's what this is all about. 
Uh, next is the training committee. Uh, so uh, we do a lot of work to get people up to speed with Panbala and up to speed with crypto in general. If you like getting people on board with crypto, that's something that has to be something that we're very good at because we're trying to elevate community life across the board and 99.9% .9 of communities out there know nothing about crypto. So we have to show them how to set up their MetaMask wallet how to make donations, how to add XDAI to their networks uh, when necessary, things like that. Uh, if you're excited about that, that sort of thing and really leveling up our ability to get people up to speed, the training committee is where it's at. Uh, next is the technology committee. There's uh, a lot of code involved in uh, determining how we split the budget each quarter. We suck in data from all these different blockchains, all these different sources. Uh, all the different liquidity pools on Uniswap, Honeyswap, et cetera. We're pulling all that data in and generating information from it. Uh, if you're interested in learning more about how that happens and contributing to that code base, join the technology committee. Uh, we also send transactions each quarter to uh, submit the recommendations to the on-chain smart contracts uh, that ends up releasing the tokens at the end of each quarter. And if you're interested in that process, uh, this is where, uh, this is the committee for you. And lastly, the liquidity committee, uh, there's uh, people who provide liquidity on different chains and we would like to reward people for that when they provide liquidity on a chain that makes it easier for people to use Panvala. There's people who put uh, liquidity on XDAI this quarter that made it possible for people to take don uh, taking donations there. And that's great. And that should be something that people are rewarded for. If you wanna be part of that process, if you wanna help deploy those contracts or uh, whatever technical details are necessary to implement liquidity rewards, that's the committee for you. So these are all example committees. None of them exist yet. If there are any that you're interested in, we're gonna send out a form uh, for people to be able to indicate that they're interested. You can also just message me on Telegram, that's cool too. And if there are things that you're interested in contributing to that aren't on here, also interested in that, generally just trying to make sure that there are clear paths for people to step up and take on parts of the machinery of Panvala uh, as we continue to grow. Any questions on committees? All right, I'm gonna keep the ball rolling. Uh, next up is the Panvala Fellows, which uh, uh, has existed for, uh, I think we created it at the beginning of 2021. Uh, but the Panvala Fellows are basically a way to earn Pan by contributing your skills to Panvala. Again, a lot of the roles that I mentioned above are like volunteer roles. That's how people get started by contributing just on a volunteer basis and showing that they provide value. And once you have shown that you provide value, we want to make sure that you can earn PAN for the work that you do on a part-time basis. So the Panvala Fellows basically reward themselves from a portion of the uh, inflation each quarter. And uh, that's, that's kind of what keeps them going over time. So if you want to earn PAN by using the skills that you have to make Panvala uh, continue to succeed, uh, there is a path to doing that. And the path is contributing on a volunteer basis and then trying to join the Panvala Fellows where you then get to pay yourself from the from Panvala's inflation. Uh, so if you're interested in that, there's a Discord channel for that. Hop in there, say something. Uh, but the general path is contribute uh, either as a coalition leader or as a committee member on a volunteer basis. And then uh, when you want to contribute more or be rewarded for what you do, uh, the Panvala Fellows is the path to making that happen. So next up is the, the meat of uh, the details of what happened this quarter uh, and when it comes to donation matching. Uh, so uh, uh, the, the, this quarter was the hardest it, it, has, it, it has been so far to share Panvala. And what I mean by that is when we have like 7.5x matching or 10.2x matching, which is the past two quarters, there's really, everybody's happy. Everybody's like, hey, this is great. We all get an insane matching multiplier. Uh, when it comes back down to earth, like it did this quarter, and it's only 2x, it's like, wait, uh, let me make sure that I'm getting my fair share of what's going on here. So I kind of just wanted to uh, shine some sunlight on the details behind what uh, makes the multiplier go down and how we try to balance uh, what each community gets when things are tighter. So the first thing on here is handling large donations. No, I'm looking. 
So, uh, in, in when it comes to donations, typically larger donations are better in the, in the normal kind of donation world. Uh, if you have a larger donation, you put it in your bank account and then you spend it gradually as you need it. Uh, in Panvala, there is no account, right? Like each uh, community has their own wallet that uh, funds go into, but Panvala as a whole does not have any way to store large donations and spend them over time because what we're trying to build up is a flow of donations. So it's just a little bit different uh, thinking about what Panvala is good for. Uh, large one-time donations aren't really what Panvala is about. And uh, that doesn't mean that we don't want them. It just means that we have to handle them in a different way. Uh, so uh, this quarter spike in donations was very large. It included a, a donation that was 150,000 pan, which is great. It's about $12,500. Uh, to uh, look at what that looks like compared to previous quarters. Uh, there was a huge jump. <laughs> it was gradually increasing quarter over quarter with a little dip, but uh, this quarter kind of blew all the other quarters out of the water and we like to see that. Uh, but when donations spike without, a, uh, without much change in the value of the PAN token itself, that means the matching multiplier goes down because the, the, the amount of PAN that's being released each quarter is kind of uh, fixed and predictable. So if, if a lot more value is going in and the value of PAN doesn't change, then the amount that it's matching by is just lower by definition. That's just a fact of life. Scarcity is still a thing. Uh, so uh, if in, in some cases, maybe the increased demand for PAN affects the price in some way, uh, but we don't, we don't control that. It's just whatever the market decides to do. So uh, this quarter, the value of PAN uh, went up a little bit, but not, uh, it didn't go up uh, the way the donations went up. So the, the multiplier went down. Uh, so one way to handle this over time is to create a separate path for large donations. So instead of just including them as normal donations in the round and having it spike for one quarter and maybe go away for future quarters, we can basically say, hey, if you want to bring in a large donation, then we can split the credit for that large donation over a year. So give you uh, a one fourth of that donation credit for each quarter over a year, go ahead and bring it in, but then we split it up. So instead of it uh, dramatically reducing the matching multiplier for one quarter, it just kind of keeps things steady over time. Because again, Panval is all about a flow. And if there's a spike, if we can find ways to smooth out the spike, things work better. Uh, so there's no concrete proposal here, but it's just to highlight how if we have uh, issues with spiky large donations over time, there is a way to fix that. Uh, it just depends on where we want to focus our efforts uh, to make things easier to share. Uh, the next thing on here is the net inflation policy, which some people are aware of, but some people aren't. So let me explain what's going on here. Um, when the donations are high, it's a mixed blessing because we, as I said before, the matching multiplier is going to go down regardless when the donations are high. Um, but uh, with the net inflation policy, that means the inflation goes down as well. So in Panvala, what we try to do is make sure that for every PAN token donated, one token goes back into the token supply from the inflation. And when we put tokens back in the token supply, that smart contract controls its release over time with the half-life of four years. So when things go back into the token supply, it gets gradually released over time. So there's three goals of doing it this way. Uh, the first goal is we wanna be set on the right path for what we're trying to do with Panvala over time. The inflation is going to taper off over time. And what we want to happen is that there are more corporate sponsorships and large individual donations going back into the token supply than there are uh, matching funds going out of the token supply. So to get on that path, we want to have that cycle always be part of Panvala. There's always something going in, there's always something going out. And what we're trying to do is grow both of those over time. Uh, if we didn't do that, then uh, it would there would be some sort of transition point where we have to decide, oh, like, how are we gonna close the cycle now? But this, the cycle has been closed from day one. Uh, it's always uh, matching going out, donations going back in and the inflation is gradually going to adjust and reach some sort of equilibrium. And ideally that equilibrium has a lot more corporate sponsorships and large donations going in than the matching funds going in. 
the second reason for this is to strengthen the incentive to maximize donations. So if you're a pan holder, uh, there's uh, some people that might be passive pan holders who are just like holding on to it. They don't really care what happens with donations. The net inflation policy helps make everybody care about donations because if you're just a self-interested person who happens to be holding on to pan, which is not something that we generally encourage, we want actual communities benefiting from this thing to hold on to pan. But uh, if you if you weren't, uh, the you would still care about donations because the more donations that come in, the lower the inflation is going to be. So the lower the circulating supply of pen. And then third, uh, we have the net inflation policy to avoid unilateral calls to reduce inflation. So if you've been paying attention to other protocols out there, other tokens out there, a lot of times people decide to just stop inflating. <laughs> like, uh, let's just fix the supply and make it a better token to speculate on. We don't want people to do that. So if we already have a practice for how uh, inflation is controlled, uh, both programmatically and dynamically in response to donations, then we hope that it can help stave off those calls. Because again, Panball is all about subsidizing communities forever. Like all we want to do is make sure that we're driving values to the participating communities. So we have to kind of build up the processes, the sort of um, the patterns that we use to make that happen. So uh, when, when people start to call for things that just drive value to the token, we already have kind of a built up culture where we just don't do that. We're trying to build up subsidies for communities, not value in a token. Uh, so to see how this net inflation policy plays out, here's the graph since April of what's been happening. Uh, the inflation percent overall decreases uh, steadily. Uh, and then the net inflation really depends on the donations that have come in. So it's gone down some quarters, it's gone up in one quarter. Uh, but what happened this quarter is it went down dramatically because a ton of donations came in. So this quarter will have the lowest inflation that Panval has ever had by far. Uh, which means that the PAN token itself will be relatively more scarce than it's been before. Um, and we, we don't know what will happen, but at the end of the day, the net inflation policy is an experiment. We're trying to see if this actually achieves those three goals that I have set out before. Uh, like nobody's really done it this way. Uh, like the, if you're familiar with uh, EIP 1559 in Ethereum, it's kind of similar to that. So like we, we don't think it's like an extreme experiment, but uh, at the end of the day, it's still an experiment. So if um, uh, it's something that we could change over time if we wanted to, uh, if it's not achieving those three goals, we might want to change it. If it does achieve those three goals, we probably want to keep it. Uh, but for example, if we didn't have the net inflation policy for this quarter, instead of the multiplier being 2x, it would be more like 3x because you would have the donations that came in plus the inflation um, that we had set aside for the Panbala League budget with nothing going back into the token supply. So that would allow us to match donations at 3x, but that also means that there's uh, less inflation for future quarters. It means that there's more inflation in the current quarter. There are trade-offs to be made, and the net inflation policy is one of the trade-offs that we make each quarter. Uh, and then uh, any questions on that before I move on? All right, I'll keep on going. So another lever that we have to make Panvala easier to share is the matching progress rate. So uh, by now, hopefully you've seen a, a progress bar that looks like this one on your own community's page. If you haven't seen this, definitely ping me. I want to show you where your community's page is. They aren't all linked on the homepage right now. They will be eventually. But uh, everybody, every community has a page right now. And if you haven't seen it, I want you to see it. But what it has is a progress bar for your matching multiplier. Because the way we make Panvala easy to share is by basically capping how much of the inflation each community can earn based on how much of the donations they brought in. So even if you have a whole bunch of pan, even if you have millions and millions of pan, that doesn't mean you get that percentage of the inflation each quarter. It's a balance between the inflations that you brought in and the pan your community owns. So one thing that we do with this progress bar is that it doesn't actually increase uh, at the same rate over the whole progress bar. What we want to do is make sure that communities that don't have that much staked pan yet still benefit from Panball's matching multiplier. 
So actually at the lower ends of this progress bar, it moves faster than it does at the end of the progress bar. We kind of give smaller uh, communities with fewer stake tokens, we kind of give them a boost. Uh, we don't have to do that. <laughs> Uh, so, for instance, like um, there are communities that consistently uh, max out their matching progress bar each quarter. And when you think about it, if we're increasing the matching for some communities and other communities are kind of maxed out, we're kind of transferring value that could go to those uh, fully staked communities to the understaked communities. Uh, I think that's a good thing. I think it encourages communities to join Panvala. I think it makes the early experience that they have in Panvala good. But uh, at the end of the day, it's up to the community sharing it. Like you have to know that this thing is happening <laughs> so you can decide if you actually like it. I like it, but uh, th that's one of the uh, benefits of quarters like this, where like there's a lot of demand for sharing the matching that's going on. So we can actually highlight the mechanics of how it works. This is one of the things we do. If you like it, great. If you don't like it, we can talk about it. Uh, but that's what I'm trying to highlight here. Uh, there's a technical note about how we actually implement that progress bar thing uh, that if you have questions about, I will answer, uh, just ping me on Telegram. Uh, but basically for each community, the lower part of the progress bar moves faster. So those communities are getting a benefit and the communities that are capped out, uh, we're kind of, uh, not hurting them, but trying to shift the benefits uh, to uh, communities with less state. Any questions on the matching progress bar? How do we find the, this is Rex, hi. Um, hmm. How do we find the pages for a community? I was looking in the Panvela um, directory. So there is no current list of those okay. pages. They're gonna be linked on the homepage, but here's your page. Uh, the, the, the general pattern is it's just panvala.com slash community name with everything lowercase and dashes instead of spaces. Uh, so a lot of them are easy to find. Some of them might not be, but if you can't find yours, always ping me, I will send you your link. And again, in about a week, they're all going to be linked from the homepage. It's just that they aren't yet. Okay. Thank you. No problem. Any other questions? All right, uh, so really, we have 20, really, go ahead. Just really quick, uh, did you enable XDAI PAN donations on this? Uh, yes, so you can donate on XDAI from this page, uh, not for DeFi safety because they haven't provided an XDAI address, but for instance, if you go to Shenanigan, uh, Shenanigan has an XDAI address provided, so you can actually donate an XDAI from here. Uh, like, again, uh, for Panvala, we don't care what tool communities are using to make donations. Uh, as long as you're successfully bringing in donations in Pan, that's all we care about. So we build tools when necessary to make it easy for people to make donations without paying a lot of fees. Uh, but like, we, we don't care what you use. Uh, most people use Gitcoin for all of their donations, and that's great. Uh, more and more communities are starting to use Giveth, and that's great. Uh, as long as you're donating in PAN, we don't care where you do it. Any other questions? All right. Uh, so we have about 20 minutes left in general. I'm going to, like, I think I might be able to get through everything left on here, but I want to make sure that there's 10 minutes to just make sure that uh, we have time for any questions you have about what's happened in the last quarter, what's coming up next quarter, et cetera. I'm going to try to get through this uh, quicker. Uh, so the last kind of lever we have to make it easy to share Panvala is the rules about uh, bringing in donations and spending the matching funds from Panvala. Uh, so it's important that people understand that Panvala can only sustainably match donations when the funds are being spent together by communities. And the reason, uh, it's easy to see why once there's an example where that's not happening. So if there was a community that collected donations, collected matching, and instead of spending it together as a community, they kind of just said, let's give the money that we have to each individual donor, each individual member of the community, uh, that would break pen vault. And the reason it would break it is because people would donate as much as possible. <laughs> uh, since it's all coming back to them, 
they would just make a donation. They would donate as much as they possibly could. It would get whatever matching comes in and then they would have more money than they started with. Uh, if people were doing that, the matching multiplier would plummet. It would go real far down until it's almost not matching anymore because everybody's just getting back what they put in and it breaks the thing. So we can't allow communities to do that sort of thing. That's not what Panball is about. Panball is about matching what people give, what people give up to their communities to spend together. So not all the value can be coming back to you because that it just there's there's no way to make that work. Uh, so that's one important constraint of Panball. So if if that's a constraint, then we have to make sure that we're uh, kind of enforcing that constraint as we do this whole thing. So that means we have to care where communities' donations are coming from and how people, how communities are using the funds that they get. So one example of that is this quarter, uh, there was a community that like, they weren't trying to do anything malicious. They were just trying to like uh, go by what they thought the rules of the game were, but they basically used uh, some of the matching funds that they got last quarter and used it to give their individual community members uh, tokens to make donations with again. So basically some of the matching funds that came out last quarter came back into Panvala as donations and were earned matching from those donations. Um, and that's that's fine, we let it slide, it's okay, they weren't trying to do anything bad, but if that's a thing that we allowed, then it would break Panvala. <laughs> like it just doesn't work in that circumstance. Uh, so we, uh, over time we kind of have to highlight the, the rules, the kind of things that make Panvala work and the things that break it and make sure that people are following the rules so we can continue to do this thing, so we can continue to share it with as many communities as possible. So like uh, one thing to keep in mind all the time is that the value in Panvala isn't about the token. It's not about extracting as much value as possible. It's about our cooperation with each other. Uh, if you're doing something that uh, makes life harder for the other communities using it, that's probably not what we want to do. But if you're doing something, if you if you generally feel like you're putting more value into Panvala than you're getting out, uh, then you might be doing the right thing. Uh, it's just kind of like a feel that you like. If you feel like you're contributing to the thing as you're getting money out, then it's probably good. If you don't, it's probably not okay. Uh, but as time goes on, we're gonna like more formally specify more and more rules. Like we don't want to be all about the rules right now because that's not fun and exciting, but like to make this work, there have to be rules, we have to enforce them. And that's something that we're gonna build up more and more over time. Uh, any questions on uh, those rules or anything about sharing Panvala in general? Is there, in the onboarding process for groups, is there a, a how, how does that go when we onboard uh, communities? Do they sign these rules or like how do they how are they made aware of the rules they aren't really so like that's why we don't really penalize people like it's not like no nobody did anything bad nobody did anything wrong but that's something that we're gonna have to do over time as the communities join they have to know what they're doing they have to know what they're allowed to do etc but right now it's just a very low touch process it's like hey here's this thing uh we see that you're collecting money to spend as a community so like as long as you're doing that sort of thing seems like you're a good fit and then they bring in donations and they have them matched. Uh, the, where it goes wrong is when uh, communities collect donations with a grant that says, hey, we're gonna do this thing. And then they do something else with it, like give it back to community members as donations. And that's where things go wrong. So and instead of highlighting the rules, we've uh, been kind of reviewing people's plans because everybody says their plan in their Gitcoin grant. And if their plan looks good, we, we roll with it. But that's, that's not sustainable as you point out. And as communities join, we have to like have a set of rules that they understand and that we've created together. And we don't have that yet. So I'm trying to highlight the uh, one particular rule that we uh, have kind of codified, don't recycle the donations. And then as new communities join, we have to make sure that they're aware of that as well. Cool. I'm going to touch on this one last thing before I open it up for discussion and general questions. The last thing on here is governing Panvala. So uh, when Panvala launched in August of 2019, uh, that's when the Panvala caucus was created. Uh, a lot of people aren't familiar with the Panvala caucus because it hasn't been the center of Panvala's governance for a while. 
uh, because uh, basically what happened is we created the Panvala League in uh, June of uh, last year. And over time, that's become the center of what Panvala really is. So uh, rather than explain more about what the Panvala Caucus is, uh, we're going to dissolve the Panvala Caucus, that's the proposal, and really elevate uh, the Panvala League's role in uh, Panvala's governance kind of formally. Uh, and the recommendations that we put out each quarter will be like, the Panvala League said this, the Panvala League said that, because really that's where the center of our governance process is today. Uh, so there are more details in the section about what's going on, but uh, overall, the idea is that uh, the since the Panvala League is where communities are represented, each community is represented in the Panvala League, there's a contact for each community, we assign voting weights to each community every quarter, we're not all about voting in the Panvala League, we actually try to avoid it, but we assign voting weights to if we needed to vote to resolve disputes. That's going to happen for this quarter next week, actually. But if you've been around, you saw it happen last uh, quarter when we assigned voting weights. Um, but uh, basically, the Panvala League will come up with what it wants to do each quarter, and that's where communities govern. Uh, instead of uh, since we've dissolved the Panvala Caucus, which is the old place where individual token holders were uh, represented, uh, we're creating a new kind of organization for individual token holders called the Panvala Token Holders Association. So it's a new organization because it has a different role in governance. It has a very small role in governance. The Panvala League is where most of the action happens. But uh, in the Panvala Token Holders Association where individuals are represented, uh, that's where people can push back on the league in the rare uh, cases where it's necessary. One example of where that might be necessary over time is imagine you have this organization of communities that have this shared resource that they really like uh, they probably want to exclude other communities from using it over time. Uh, if they're like competing for similar kind of members, uh, community members, uh, they probably want to exclude similar kinds of communities so they have less competition and it's easier to get uh, the things done that they want to do. And that's natural, it's normal, but that's where the indiv individuals and the token holders association have the ability to push back. They're the ones who balance that desire for like stability and cohesiveness in the communities with the, uh, all, what's also necessary is competition. So there's always kind of like the vibrant communities emerging from trying to be good. <laughs> uh, if, if we let communities kind of bottle things up, it'll get stagnant over time. And that's why there has to be a role for individual uh, token holders to have a role in governance. That's the small role, it's gonna be rare uh, that the Token Holders Association has in governance. What the Token Holders Association does mostly is a uh, place of social role. We bring together all the individual token holders, uh, have fun with each other, and govern the uh, activities fund, which uh, most people are aware of, gives grants to fund uh, events, to whatever makes your event better, the activities fund can give you a grant for that. And then connecting uh, individual token holders who live in the same city so they can form tighter bonds with one another. Uh, the Token Holders Association is mostly social. Uh, when, there are, when there is a need to vote in the Token Holders Association, the idea is that it would be quadratic voting. So like if you have one pan, you get one vote. If you have 100 pan, you get 10 votes. If you have 400 pan, you get 20 votes. That's generally the model. But again, uh, we, we are not all about voting in this sort of thing. We try to resolve disputes by talking things out and voting when uh, we need to resolve disputes. Uh, but that's the general idea of what's changing in the governance structure of Panvala. Uh, it probably won't feel like much of a change because it's just codifying what we've already been doing. The Panvala League has been the center of governance in Panvala for a while, and now we're just formalizing that and creating a separate role for an organization of individual token holders. So that's all I got. That's this big document about what's going on this quarter. Uh, for the rest of the time that we have, the, about eight minutes, if you have any questions about what's gone on this quarter in matching, if you don't understand something that's happening uh, for your community, if you're wondering when you get your matching, how that works, uh, this is the time for any questions uh, that you have about what's going on with Panvala. Uh Yeah, I have two questions. Uh, first, on the quadratic voting, do you have a system in place for this, or do you, what are you... Uh, do you have an infrastructure that you're planning on using? 
Uh, no. So the, the idea within the Token Holders Association is kind of just like the Panvala League, where it isn't all about voting. We, there's no actual plan to vote on anything. It's just that when there are disputes that need to be resolved, we resolve them by voting. So it's not that we're like urgently seeking out a tool to implement this. It's just kind of like uh, a general understanding that like uh, when you join the Token Holders Association and you're like, well, how are we going to resolve disputes? Like this is roughly how we're going to solve them. Uh, I guess the second question is, do we have rankings from the donations uh, out? I, mi I missed them if, they, if they've been released. Uh, so they, they're in that spreadsheet, which I will link to right now. Uh, they are out. Uh, it's the, the spreadsheet itself has become hard to navigate at this point. But if you go to the full scoreboard tab and you look in column uh, Z, that tells you your estimated multiplier for the round. Uh, there's um, there's other columns in there that are hard to explain. But like, uh, so we added the coalition subsidy for this uh, quarter. So there's that 15% bonus that if you're part of a coalition with three or more communities in it, you get a 15% bonus that goes to your coalition multi-sig. So that's the coalition subsidy column, that's column V. And then the community subsidy uh, column is what will go to your community over time. But again, all of this depends on the daily staking snapshots that we take. And this particular spreadsheet doesn't represent the daily staking snapshots. It's, if the, it's kind of the whole quarter as if, uh, if you staked consistently for the whole quarter. Uh, but we've been taking those snapshots since April 2nd, last Friday, and we'll continue to take them. The first uh, release of matching will be on April 30th, and that'll be about 30% of the matching for the quarter based on the staking snapshots from here until the end of the month. And then there'll be snapshots through May, and then another release at the end of May, snapshots through June, and then another release at the end of June. Any other questions? Yeah, uh, does staking from a project within a coalition affects the multi matching funds for the coalition? Absolutely. So every everything that goes to the coalition is based on what the individual community owns. Uh, so uh, right now, there's actually a concrete example of this right now that I'll highlight. So uh, if you um, it's it's all it's a 15% bonus on the the matching that each community has earned that goes to the coalition wallet. So for instance, the Future of Work Coalition is uh, brand new. This uh, I guess all the coalitions are brand new, but the the Future of Work Coalition actually doesn't have any staked pan right now. So for instance, Gitcoin uh, itself has a whole bunch of donations from the uh, the kind of tips on each uh, Gitcoin donation. So they brought in a lot of donations and actually could get 5% uh, of the inflation this quarter pretty easily, but they just don't have any staked pan yet. And I'm actually going to reach out to them today to try to adjust this because they can move something from kernel to get coin and fix this. But right now, the Future of Work Coalition is actually getting nothing to their multi-sig. And when we fix this, uh, they will start getting something to their multi-sig. So it's all based on uh, both the staking and the donations you brought in uh, that uh, produces the funds for your coalition. Did I miss something? Did I miss something that? Um, oh, hey. Did I miss something that you're creating multi sigs for the coalitions um, it, without the coalitions doing it themselves? Is that correct? So, no. So, the coalitions create their own multi sig. It's just that we reserve part of the inflation to put wherever the coalition tells us to. Got it. That makes sense. So, you just hold the money, but you don't create the multi sig for us. I wouldn't say hold. So the, the actual process that happens behind the scenes is that uh, the inflation is controlled by a smart contract that releases it gradually each quarter. Uh, with the recommendation that we put on chain this quarter, 75% uh, of the inflation goes to the Panvala League multi-sig, which has five signers from communities in the Panvala League. And that's where the inflation goes to. 
where it will sit until it gets distributed to the communities and the coalition multi six. Got it. Okay. Sounds good. Any other questions? Anything you need help with? Anything you don't understand? Yeah, I got uh, one question. Um, if our donation address is a multi sig, how do we withdraw from the ZK rollup? That's a good question. I, th I know ZK Sync has a process for it. Uh, people went through it last quarter and found it slightly painful. Uh, I don't know if it's gotten any better. Uh, I think Sky is currently our expert on withdrawing from multi, multi six on ZK Sync. Yeah, we, uh, so we, we had started a, uh, a Telegram group one quarter uh, for people who had stuck money <laughs> in ZK Sync. If you contact the ZK Sync team, I think they mainly use Discord now. Um, they can basically do an action that pushes money out of a like layer to account. Like there's a way for you to do it yourself if you're if you're very technical, but you know that's what true layer two is like. You can always withdraw your money to mainnet, and they can help push it to you, um, which is the easiest thing. Uh, the other important thing with that is. A lot of people are, a lot of uh, Panvali members are probably using Gnosis uh, multi-sigs and be careful with multi-sigs on XDI because you don't have the same multi-sig on XDI. So I guess you, you uh, Niran, you had mentioned uh, some people had given us a different address for XDI donations, but make sure it is possible uh, to, it is possible to get the same address on XDI, but most people don't have the same address on XDI. So just be very careful that people aren't sending money on XDI to your mainnet multi-sig address, obviously. But yeah, right, yeah we do have two different ones. Cool. Uh, Cool. Uh, so it is the hour. Uh, I won't keep anybody that needs to go. Uh, thanks everybody for coming. Again, like Panvala is all about the communities that participate. There's no magical technology that provides value to a token. That's not what we do here. It's about you and your communities. The more we can work together, the more value we produce by working together, the stronger we all get. Uh, so thanks for showing up. Thanks for being a part of this thing. And if there's any roles you want to step up into, we want to help you do that. And if there's anything we can do for you, we want to help you do that as well. Uh, thanks for being part of Panvala and looking forward to elevating community life with all of you. Thanks so much, Niran.